Hi, this is Bob Pryor, and I'm going to talk to you today about the trigonometric functions around the unit circle. In particular, I'm going to talk about the six trig functions when the arguments are degrees. Before I do, I just want to do some quick reminders of information about the unit circle. For example, we know that in the first quadrant, quadrant 1, everything's positive. We might say that all functions are positive. And in quadrant 2, only the sine and its reciprocal, cosecant, are positive. All other trig functions are negative there, the, the values. In quadrant 3, only the tangent and its reciprocal cotangent of theta are positive. And in quadrant 4, only the cosine and its reciprocal secant are positive. Sometimes we use this helpful device to remind us we might say that all are positive in the first quadrant sine, and I use sine to represent both of those, sine and cosecant, are positive in the second quadrant, tangent positive in the third quadrant, and cotangent too, and cosine and secant are positive in the fourth quadrant. Very important information, and you should know that. At the same time, we also need to know the coordinates of the points on the unit circle. For example, this point right here is 1, 0. That's some very important information. And that's because the radius is 1. And this point right here is the point 0, 1. We have special markings at 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. Let me mark them this way. So the first thing that we might want to do is actually set up these values in the chart that we have here at the right. Okay, as you can see, I've already filled in the degree and radian measures from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. The sine values are 0, and that comes back to the fact that the sine is the y value, and we see at 0 degrees, it's 0. And then at 30 degrees, it's 1 half. And if we keep going, it's square root of 2 over 2 for 45 degrees and this is square root of 3 over 2 and 1. Back over here we can see that the y value is 1. And the cosine values are the x values and they are just the same but in kind of an opposite direction starting at 1 and ending at 0. So it's 1 square root of 3 over 2 square root of 2 over 2 1 half and 0. Tangent function that's sine theta over cosine theta. 0 divided by 1 is 0. 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2 when simplified at first becomes 1 divided by square root of 3 but as we rationalize the denominator we get square root of 3 over 3. So that's the value we're going to use. Square root of 2 over 2 divided by itself is 1. Square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half is square root of 3 and 1 divided by 0 is undefined. Now the cotangent values, which are cosine theta over sine theta, are the same values as tangent except that they are in reverse order. So cosine divided by sine, 1 divided by 0 is undefined. And then the square root of 3 and 1 and square root of 3 over 3 and eventually 0. Secant theta, that's 1 over cosine theta and cosecant is 1 over sine theta and just like sine and cosine they have the same values but in the reverse order. With secant reciprocal of 1 is 1. Reciprocal of square root of 3 over 2 is at first 2 over square root of 3 but after we rationalize that we get 2 radical 3 over 3 and likewise for 45 degrees square root of 2 over 2 we if we took the reciprocal and get 2 over square root of 2, 
we could leave it like that but really it's a lot simpler if we simplify it to get just square root of 2. Reciprocal of 1 half is 2. Reciprocal of 0, there is none. So again, say undefined. And as I mentioned, these same values appear in cosecant, but they will simply be in the reverse order. So it's undefined at 0 degrees. 30 degrees cosecant is 2. Uh, 45 degrees square root of 2. 2 square root of 3 over 3 at 60 degrees and 1 at 90 degrees. Okay, we will refer to this table throughout and we will also refer to the circle that we have over here, especially with the quadrants and understanding the different values when they're positive, when they're negative.